So my name is Mark Walsh from Integration Training. This is my colleague, the lead trainer of Integration Training, Francis Price. Hello. So one of the areas we work in is change management. So we're going to have a little dialogue about that as an introduction to the area. Hmm. So um, always we're involved with change work. Companies are always changing. The world is constantly changing and producing new demands. So um, change management, um, I would say, is a part of any company or organization's work and a, a big part of any leader's work. I mean, some people talk about change management as all, almost being an oxymoron because change happens. It's happening all the time. It's just happening. So the idea of managing it is almost a little false. And yet there is something to be said for being prepared for it and being mobile enough that you can ride the wave of it gracefully. So change is the only constant. Um, huge subject and there's lots and lots of academic models and business training models. Um, I like a guy called Cotter, has some nice models. Um, any you particularly, particularly use? Um, Patricia Clarkson wrote very eloquently, uh, it's quite complicated, but very eloquently about change from a Gestalt perspective. That's an interesting one. Um, and uh, also a more unconventional one is there's uh, an embodiment practice called Five Rhythms Dance. And the flow within Five Rhythms can be used as a really fascinating map of how change happens in an embodied way. So often change management uh, models will have um, a cycle of some kind. And, um, you know, for example, let's take, let's take change in a team as a, as a small example. Um, uh, Tuckman's model uh, is very famous of forming, storming, norming, performing. Sometimes a fifth one can be added to that. There's different variations. The idea that um, teams just don't just come as a ready-made package. They have to meet and then they have to, sometimes have to have some conflict, get through that before they can perform well. So that's um, a classic model. Um, other, others look more at roles, like Belbin's team roles, for example, roles in which people take uh, in any team. Yeah, and then when we look more widely at organisations, we're really looking at culture change. So if you want to make a change, I would suggest that you're always looking at a culture change. People often think that, oh, we're making this change to the IT system, uh, it's just an IT change, it's a practical change, they're using a different system, it's not that big a deal. But people get attached to things, you know. We as human beings, most of us have some kind of sentimental nature and we get used to doing things a certain way. Even if they're suboptimal, we get adjusted to it. We come to be attached to it. So you've got to deal with that culture of attachment. You've got to deal with that emotional component as well, even when you're just making a pragmatic or, let's say, IT change. So, so culture, I, I like really simple definition of that, which is how we do things around here. Uh, and this has this emotional component, which is also in the body. Um, you've experienced this if you've been to a certain department or a certain company, and you get there and you just have this felt sense of what it's like if everyone's agitated or if everyone's depressed or, you know, whatever the mood, this physical predisposition for action, as one of my teachers calls it, um, is, you can really feel as the culture. And um, certainly what I found the early days of running this company as a training company primarily, is it would be parachuted in to do training. And um, you know, we'd do a training piece and then it just wouldn't stick. And no matter how good the training was, if it was anti the culture, if it wasn't supported by the leadership and a kind of wider picture. Um, so um, trying to do training without considering culture, I would now say is always a mistake. So culture trumps systems and structures every time. So management might, for example, change uh, an organizational procedure or a structure in the company. Um, but if the culture is kind of leaning people going in the opposite direction, culture will win. So um, it does need to be addressed explicitly in any kind of change. Also, what we see here is you can't separate out change management from leadership. So leadership, vision, uh, direction, how to establish buy-in, that's a really critical part of any, of any change management. Leaders are symbols within a system. So whatever behaviour a leader exhibits validates that same behaviour in others. If you don't change the leaders, it's very difficult to change the system no matter how much work you do from the ground up, and even actually no matter how much people want it. Generally speaking, if the leadership is powerful enough sticking to its old position, it will make it very, very difficult to make the change. Even if nothing else, once people feel like they're doing the right things, let's say, if the leaders are still doing things that are contrary to that, to that behaviour, no matter how convinced people are of their own position, they'll start to go, well, they aren't doing it, so why should I? Yeah, I remember there was a major charity I did some work for about five years ago in London. And, um, you know, they gave stress management workshops to everyone because people were burning out and productivity was going lower. 
And then, you know, I was there after the training and it was fairly late and I'd stay and had dinner and done some other things with HR. And it was quite late at night and um, the lights were still on in the offices of, of the kind of head, the heads of department and the, the um, directors of that charity. And it was like, okay, well, they weren't modeling what they were preaching in terms of work-life balance. Mm. And uh, I'd be very surprised if that, that stress training made a huge difference there because it would have been undermined by that. You know, when you're working with culture, and I suggest when you're working with change, more broadly, you're always working with a whole system. You can't just move in and fix one piece. Human beings are not mechanical. You can't take a broken arm off, leave it at the hospital, and get it fixed and come back for it. And human systems are just the same, just as Mark was talking about in terms of being parachuted in to do a piece of training. Often people see a department in isolation and say, that department is a problem department, let's do some training there. But it's not uncommon for us to go in and do a piece of training there. And then six months later, another team has become a problem. And then you go and do some training there. And then six months later, another team has become a problem. These problems often bounce around. And when seen through a systemic view, you need to approach what's going on in the organisation, what's going on in the culture, not just what's going on in this team. Of course, there are instances where something is more isolated, but the vast majority of the time, you've got to take a systemic view, which means a wider piece of work. So there's just some of our rambling thoughts. We had this as a bit of a dialogue. We hadn't really planned it through, just our thoughts on the subject. Um, I hope something there is of use to you. Um, of course, if you're interested for your organisation in this work, our details will follow. Or if you just want to stay in touch, feel free. There's our, our business Facebook, or you could subscribe or go on our newsletter. So um, thank you. Thanks. Thank you.